Hi, I'm Rev. Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for 40 years. I'm going through the lessons this year, as I've done in the past, asking Jesus to clarify for me. And then I write from that clarity, and that's what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. We're looking at lesson 320. My Father gives all power unto me. The Son of God is limitless. There are no limits on his strength, his peace, his joy, nor any attributes his Father gave in his creation. What he wills with his creator and redeemer must be done. His holy will can never be denied because his father shines upon his mind and lays before it all the strength and love in earth and heaven. I am he to whom all this is given. I am he in whom the power of my father's will abides. Your will can do all things in me and then extend to all the world as well through me. There is no limit on your will. And so all power has been given to your son. You know, that's a pretty incredible paragraph, isn't it? That we are limitless. Limitless in our strength, our peace, our joy. It's just really amazing. We've been told that we came here to save the world. And now we're told that we have the power to do this. We have the power of God. Very clearly, he says this. I am he to whom all this is given. And Jesus is not talking about our ego. This is not about arrogance and grandiosity. It is humbling to realize that we are in the what we are in the face of what we seem to be in our ego persona. His power and strength are available to us and a good thing because sometimes just getting through life seems to require strength that is beyond us, let alone having the strength to save the world. Living our purpose as we navigate the illusion would indeed be impossible if we were depending on our ego self in spite of how it must seem at times, the power and strength of God are always available to us. He created us thus, and dreaming we are powerless does not undo the will of God. So should we become discouraged with life, this is what we want to remember. There have been times when just a simple process of forgiveness seemed more than I could accomplish. I would become aware of thoughts I believed were not true and ask for correction. In spite of my effort, it would appear as if nothing changed. At those times, I didn't know what to do, and I would feel helpless. Yet, if I have the strength and power of God in me, how could I claim to be helpless? So I did the only thing I knew to do. I reached deeper to touch that power, and I insisted on healing, and I did it as often as I needed to. No matter how much it seemed I was failing or how weak and helpless I felt, I knew this had to work. I simply persisted and I practiced patience. What I came to realize is that I am instructing my mind when I practice forgiveness. In calling on the power of God in me to make this change, the change of mind that is needed will occur. The mind is my servant and so must and will accept this new instruction. Those years of sometimes frustrating effort were important. It was then I was overcoming my uncertainty and doubt and learning patience. Most importantly, I was learning to trust the power of God in me. What he wills with his creator and redeemer must be done. As one, as a son of God, we are limitless. You know, limitless is a word that has little meaning in this world. I cannot think of a thing that is limitless. 
I cannot even imagine what limitless must look like. <laughs> but this is what I am. I think about this. I read about it. And I open my heart to it. I know that as a body in the world, I cannot be limitless. But I can have fewer limits even here. And by anticipating the truth, I can bring myself to the truth sooner. If you haven't read Dying to Be Me by Anita Marjani, I highly recommend it. If you haven't read it lately, I recommend rereading part two, where she talks about her NDE. I bask in her descriptions. She says, during my near-death experience, it felt as if I were connected to the entire universe and everything contained within it. And it seemed that the cosmos was alive, dynamic, and conscious. I found that every thought, emotion, or action I made while expressing through the physical body had an effect on the whole. In fact, in that realm of oneness, it felt as though the whole universe were an extension of me. This realization has, of course, dramatically changed the way I view things. We're all co-creating this world and our lives within it through our emotions, thoughts, and actions. In another place, she says, during my NDE, there was nothing outside of my greater awareness because I was one with the entirety of the universal energy. It felt as though I encompassed totality. In that state, there was total clarity and all became known. I seemed to become everything and I existed in everything. You know, we're truly magnificent. I want to have just a bit of that feeling right now. I do get a sense of expansion when I meditate, and perhaps that will grow with practice. And in Regina's tips today, I'm not going to quote what she said, but I'm going to tell you what I came away with. Stop chasing stuff that doesn't matter and focus on awakening to the truth. I can't think of a clearer way to say this. So here's a past entry. I've been focused on the truth that I am completely responsible for everything as I experience it. When I am tempted to see myself as a victim, my mind goes back to this truth. How can I be a victim if I am completely responsible for everything in my life? If you doubt that, go back and read Lesson 152, The Power of Decision just to reinforce if you ever doubt that you are completely responsible. Occasionally, I still get so caught up in some fear thought, and before you know it, I've weaved all sorts of stories around it. I'm then frightened, guilty, and miserable. I want to stop, and I try to stop, but it feels like I cannot. It can be very frustrating in my inability to stop my mind from weaving stories around this core of fear just increases the fear. Then I remember that I don't, I did this to myself. <laughs> he tells us that more than once, you but do this to yourself. I may not remember doing it and I may not feel like I did it, but I did it. I made this with help. I can easily extricate myself, but first I must realize that it was not done to me. I am not victim, I am maker. Within me is the redeemer who will help me redirect the power of my mind to create lovingly. Only have to want that direction. From the position of the ego created self, I cannot extricate myself from this error because it is part of the miscreation that I deny my power. However, if I'm simply willing to shift that focus, I'm no longer looking with the ego at all that happens. I'm looking with the Holy Spirit, the guide within my mind, the healer within my mind. I'm no lo longer looking from the position of victimhood, but from the position of power given me of God. It's funny, really. Nothing changes, and yet everything changes. I used my innate God-given power to make a world of chaos, then deliberately forget I made it. 
Now I bow down to my creation and say, oh, please don't hurt me anymore. In an instant, I see the absurdity of this position and using the same power, I call upon the truth within me to look with new eyes on all I made and to laugh. I am flexing my muscles, learning to express my power to be as God created me, not the imagined separate being I dreamed up. This power is real. The power of God abides in my mind. Yesterday, I visualized this power flowing through me, not directed by me, but flowing through me. Then I imagined I stopped trying to direct it to be something it is not and simply allowed it to be itself. I imagined the joy and the bliss of being a channel for God's pure love. I have imprisoned my mind for such a long time that I was unable to imagine that what pure love might create, but I know that knowledge is in my mind. To free it, I only have to change my mind about what I thought I wanted instead. I need only notice the errors and look to the part of my mind in which the voice for God resides to have them reinterpreted. My part is so simple and every day of practice makes it easier and easier. My joy overflows at the thought of another day walking steadily on toward the truth. And then in 2015, I wrote again and I said, all of this did get much easier. I still have ego thoughts and sometimes I become interested in them and I have this little drama to deal with, but life is so much more peaceful now. But this morning when I was reading this lesson, I noticed a disturbing thought in my mind. It occurred when I read this sentence. What he wills with his creator and redeemer must be done. The thought was that in order for me to have this power Jesus talks about, I can only will with my cre what my creator wants me to will. And I felt resistance to this. I thought, how unfair that I'm given unlimited power, then limited in its use. To use it, I must only will what my father wills. This thought disturbed me because I think maybe it was a kind of thinking that got me in the illusion to begin with. Maybe this is what I was thinking when I decided to strike out on my own, do my own creating without any guidance, something outside the will of God. I brought all this to Jesus and asked for his help in seeing clearly. My thinking has brought me to uncertainty and doubt, which makes me fearful. Jesus, what is it that you want me to understand about this? And this is what he shared with me. The idea that you could have a will separate from God is the illusion. There is no other will to have. You can only pretend to have another will and then pretend to create from that will. This makes an impossible world, a world opposite in every way to reality. Think of this. God's will is perfect peace, unconditional love, blissful joy, and absolute freedom. What could you want that is better than this? Why would you want the opposite of this? You have that opposite now, but are you happy with it? Are you happy with love that shifts and changes? Are you happy with peace that is yours only when certain things occur? And those things are out of your control? And are you happy to be in fear and to be driven by guilt? The fear of losing all this and returning your mind to its divine state was just an ego response to your awakening. The ego mind is a desire to be less than you are. You made it and so you believe in it, but you've asked that it be undone for you and so it is, all in accordance with your will. The resistance is the resistance of ego mind that is made of fear and guilt and so has no other response to offer. It is given, it has nothing to do with your true mind and your true desires. It is not you, 
just a thought form you made. Dear sister, you do not want to be free from God, free to make unlike God, free to have a will that is not the only will in existence. It is the ego that wants this. The ego is a mental con construct. It is not you. Do not be afraid of what you made. It has no power of itself. Do not be afraid of the thoughts that come from it. They have no power. You have played in that field of make-believe, and now you have seen the effects of doing so. You are naturally ready to return to the kingdom, to your father, to your creations, and to your family. And yes, I am. <laughs> Now, how about you? You ready to return to your divine, true nature, to pure love, to God, our Father? Thanks so much for being here with me today and sharing this lesson with me. If you found it helpful, then please like it. And uh, if you haven't yet, then please consider subscribing. And I'll be back tomorrow with another lesson.